Hello. Let's fix the game, boy. Hello, welcome back to the shed. It's been a while. Um, I have been busy with so many different projects, but I've not actually been out in the shed for a fair old bit, really. Um, so I've, I've been, what have I been doing? I've been tiling. I've been playing video games, actually playing them for a change. I've been making music on my Game Boys. I'm going to do a video with that. I've learned how to do the Rubik's Cube one-handed. But I've not been out in my shed doing different projects. So I came out this evening. I was about to fix up this Game Boy and I thought I should probably start filming again and putting some more stuff out on YouTube. So that's what I'm going to do. This one has an issue with the lines down the screen and I don't think I've done a video about that before. So I'll do a quick video and uh, see how that goes. This Game Boy here uh, is in pretty good shape. It's already been modded. It's got a biverted backlight put in there. Um, but when I switch on, uh, you'll hopefully be able to see there's a couple of lines down here. Now, they actually come and go. If I change the contrast, that actually looks fine at the moment. If I turn it off, turn it on again. Hmm. Now, this is always a problem when you've got an, an issue that's just a fault then it's easy to diagnose, easy to sort out, but if it's something intermittent it can be a bit tricky. But there's these kind of couple of lines that show up here that I want to try and eradicate. Although it's fine, like it seems to be that you switch it on and then those lines appear and then they go. They can kind of come and go while you're playing. I don't know whether it's whether, you know, when you're pushing buttons or when pressure gets applied elsewhere. So I'm going to take it apart and just do a quick reseal along the, the bottom of the LCD and while I'm doing that I'll show you how it all gets sorted. So take it apart. So that's now a part, so what you can do with these, when you've got them all separated, is you can keep the back together, you can actually pop the batteries back in, and then it will actually function, but it'll allow you to access this, this kind of area. Now, on here, there's a little rubber strip that's in place that kind of keeps all that protected, and when you assemble it back together, it keeps a bit of pressure on there, because the lines come from these layers being separated. So I'll have to peel that back, but it actually looks like it may have been glued back on last time, which is going to make for a... Oh no, no, we're all right. I'll take that back. So it was just the tape was slightly misaligned, which is fine by me. Uh, so what you've got to do is remove that rubber strip. Now that's attached with like a double-sided tape. So not only do you need to make sure that that rubber strip's gone, but if there's any little remnants of the double-sided tape, they need removing. So you can get those off with a fingernail uh, or an end of a spudger or something like that. you just got to get that pretty much clear. And then what we're going to do is apply heat to reseal the join between this kind of ribbon part, um, which is on the top surface, and the glass of the LCD that's, that's below it. So to do that, you just need to kind of gently apply pressure and heat to that area. And um, what you'll find is, see where I switched on there, there's like just a few different lines. That usually indicates it's one of the trickier screens to deal with, because if it's just bold lines and then you do the treatment and then they go, but if it kind of fades in and out, it's a little bit more tricky. But we'll see how we go. I mean, this has been quite heavily modded. I had a look inside, and if I just lift the screen out of the way you can see that there's some big chunky wires going down here for the pro sound there's new capacitors in there which i'm not sure that might be from that bass boost mod which i've not tried before um but anyway yeah there's been some work done to it already so and there's a bivert chip at the top so you never know if it's going to be some issue with you know different currents going in certain directions and things like that but it it seems fine when it's on now. What I'll do is I'll just the contrast so it's just a clear white screen. And I've got my soldering iron already heated up and cleaned. It's best with like a flat tip iron on these. You can do it with a pointed tip, um, but the flat tip is useful because you can rest that surface on there and apply the heat quickly. And by applying the heat quickly, it means you don't need to keep it on there as long because you don't actually want to melt the ribbon. You just want to heat it. So it's a timing thing. Also, I've cleaned it up 
I'll wipe it down. I've removed any solder from it. I've seen some guys that say it's best with a little bit of solder on to kind of spread the heat, but I've always found it's best to get it completely clear to do that. You can just sort of wipe it off on a wet sponge, or if you've got a soldering iron tip cleaner like this one, you just sort of put it in, wiggle it round, and that will not only clean the tip, but it'll brighten it up a little bit. Okay. So let's see how this goes. It's, it's tricky because there's no lines here at all at the moment. Um, but as soon as I put some heat on, you can see those start to appear. I'll actually, and I normally work with it flat, but I'll lift it up to the camera just so you can see what I'm talking about. So when the heat's on there, this ribbon affects these vertical lines and you can see some starting to appear and then they'll come and go. And over at this end as well, there's a few. When I've switched it on, I've noticed a few on either side, but never any in the middle. So all I'm going to do is reheat. It's best to start from not where the actual lines are, um, but a little bit further in. It's kind of like you're smoothing them out, you're squeezing them out from the centre out to the edge uh, in each direction. So I'm actually going to start around here until I start to notice some lines. And all I'm doing there is a little bit of up and down movement. And there we go. And then a line starts to appear. So if I just apply the heat there and work my way out to the edge until there's no lines visible and then do it the same from in here. That line showed up a little bit again but not so much. And it's just on the area, like you can see the glass of the LCD so it's just on that area. Try not to touch the LCD itself. So doing that here again. I'm working my way along, the lines are showing up but they're not as bad and it's like I'm squeezing that fault out towards the outside edge. So don't, it's quite hard, I mean unless you've got a soldering iron at like crazy temperature it's quite hard to actually melt the ribbon because um, it's, it's sort of bonded there with heat in the first place and underneath that you've got glass which isn't going to be affected by the heat too much anyway. So don't worry about melting it, but if you notice it's all warping and things, then maybe just ease off a little. And also it'll it'll discolour slightly in this area. So I'm going to swap to the other side for a while. It's quite good to do it and let it cool, and then do it again, and then let it cool. Um, but with a with an intermittent fault like this one, it's it is slightly trickier. Usually, you'll just like switch on and see some really bold lines, and this method will clear them out quite well. What you have to do is it can all look fine while it's um, heated, but then when you let it cool for like ten minutes, switch it off and come back to it, they can all come back. So you have to make sure that that's joined. So it does take a little bit of repetition, but as I'm making my way along now that doesn't seem to be as much in the way of like at first when you saw when I put the heat on and all those lines just suddenly popped up on the right there's none of that now on the left let's see how that's doing tiny tiny little bit compared to how it was before and they will be fainter towards the center of the screen and bolder towards the outside and the goal is that we end up with them all eventually going so the fainter ones will disappear, the bold ones will become fainter, and they'll eventually go. So I'm just gently working my way along, being careful not to damage. Now if you get some that are being really stubborn, what you can do is move slightly down from this part to like where the edge of the, the glass part is, and you can go over that a little bit as well. Now that is more delicate than the part that's completely stuck, so you know, don't keep the temperature on it for too long and watch out for melting plastic and things like that. It's starting to look much better. It's still flickering when I'm putting the temperature on. So it's still not quite bonded properly. And as that starts to discolour here, it's all a little flickery. And I'll move away. Right, so I'm going to let that just settle and cool for a bit. You'll see those lines flicker and appear again and then disappear again. Don't let that tempt you to start like heating it again. It just needs time to settle. So I'm going to leave that for a bit. I'll pause the video and then uh, we'll take a look in about 10 minutes or so. In fact, just a close up look there. Now you can see that there's a slight discoloration here. That's just from the heat that won't stay that color as it cools. Like that side was the same. 
and that's like nice and blue now so this will all even out I mean I'm not even sure how this camera is going to be picking it up but we shall see Okay, we're back. So we left that for about 10 minutes or so and switched off, just let everything cool. Now, most of those lines are evident when I switch on. So if it's not worked when I switch on, we'll probably get a little flicker. And if that's the case, I'll just do the same treatment again. I'm expecting it might happen, but it shouldn't be as bad as it was before. So let's see. We'll switch on. Ah, no problems at all. Okay, so that's probably fixed it because it was just a small, minor, intermittent fault. And it was often when it was switched on that they would flicker and then disappear. So that's a good sign. I've left it about 10 minutes, switched off. It's all cooled right down on here. If I apply any pressure or knock it, there's no like flickering or anything like that. If I turn the contrast completely the other way, um, there's also no signs of any lines or any gaps or anything like that. So we should be okay. So the main thing, once you've done that and you've got everything working, the thing that I've done this countless times before but what you'll do is you'll reassemble the whole Game Boy and then you'll find the little rubber strip just after and then you'll have to take it all apart again and <laughs> reapply the rubber strip and then put it all back together so when you've finished and you've got all that cleaned up before you do anything else the rubber strip goes back on and there's another important job which is finding it because it's got that sticky bit on it tends to get stuck to other things and you'll end up like finding it stuck on the bottom of a cartridge or something like that but anyway that sticks back in place because it's double-sided tape that's on there it should still be sticky enough to just hold it I'll switch that off we'll put it all back together and then it'll be the moment of truth of switching it back on because the amount of the pressures particularly with the other mods with all the wires and things in place the different pressures that are in there might end up causing it to go worse also, before I put it back together, I'm going to use a very soft microfiber cloth like the type that you use for cleaning a pair of glasses uh, just to clean up the lens a little bit because there's a few marks on there. Partly the fingerprints from where I was working on it and also there's like a few little sticky bits at the side that I want to get rid of. So I'll work on that. I'll speed up that bit of footage so you don't have to sit through it all and then we'll come back and look at it when it's all back together. back together it was a bit of a tight squeeze I think largely down to the thickness of the wires that have been used on the other mods but it's someone else's mods and it was working fine so I'm not going to go interfering with that um, unless it gives us an issue with the display so let's try switch it on yay no lines and the main screen all looks nice and solid there's no flickering evident at all so quite happy with that and um, I have got a test cart um, which has got all sorts of different tests so now's probably a good time to show you that so it loads up with your Nintendo boot like that and then there's all sorts of different tests you can do like you can test the screen the controls it's quite good for troubleshooting if you've got broken Game Boys and sound tests as well so I'm gonna run through the whole lot I don't know I've probably done this on a video before but let's see anyway so auto test just runs through them all so first of all does the RAM test Go on the next one screen test and it just displays lots of different patterns and that will highlight if you've got any dead pixels or any issues on there which is perfect for these lines and it puts a bit of a strain on the screen and the display as well which is a good thing in this case because it's in those cases under that strain it might flicker a little bit and it didn't at all and then you press each button so if I turn up the sound it'll make a sound when you press each one and they're sort of ghosted out on there and as you press them they'll appear like that so we've got A and B start select up down left right and then it says press A and B for next test because it passed on that one press B to scroll so you're just looking for a smooth scroll on the display everything moving smoothly there press A for the next one so the sound one starts and it's just making that noise there you press a button and it'll sweep back down and then it'll sweep back up and then continuous tone and then a beep and then the noise that's like the noise channel that's like what you use for making your drums on lsdj and then we're all done so yeah all fixed all good right so that's it um that was one of the first mods that i ever did on it well is it a mod it's a repair so it was one of the first game boy repairs i learned how to do there's another one that works quite well if you've got that issue with the lines before you even take it apart 
one quite nice uh, <laughs> little fix, it's only a temporary one, is if you take the cover off the, the battery back and you've got little lines, you just kind of slightly nudge one of the batteries so it like disconnects from the power and then reconnects and it kind of restarts the thing and it kind of gives it an, a little bit of a jolt of power and fixes those. So sometimes if you've got like a little bit of an issue with lines occasionally that that can be a quick fix but in terms of taking it apart and, and heating that bit that was one of the first things I learned how to do with the Game Boy and it generally brings something that's a faulty Game Boy to something that's completely usable um, so it's more useful than any other mod out there so yeah it's well worth giving a go if you've got one and it's got those vertical lines great if it's got horizontal lines not so much. It's nice that there are other solutions out there now, like with the backlit LCDs that I've done videos of before, uh, because the horizontal ones are horrible to fix, and even when you do manage to get them sorted, they tend to creep back in not long later. So yeah, that's it. I hope I've covered everything. I think I've probably covered too much, as usual. If you want to know anything else, ask me in the comments. I've got more videos planned, so keep an eye out for those, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all that stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, more tinkering about with old stuff sometime soon.